wanted to welcome everyone to the volunteer meeting. So tonight, um, basically what we wanted to accomplish is maybe match up some of the folks. We, at DCTV, we, re we actually received quite a few phone calls from people that wanted to volunteer and we're really excited about the enthusiasm that people have about this 350 that we're just about to go into. And uh, so we wanted to just have some of the folks present that are the heads of some of these committees. So um, we have a whole series of events. One of the first ones um, that we have is the Sin Nominee concert. And it's, it's really kind of an interesting concert. We were kind of hoping that we could get a few adults for this concert to kind of help out. And then some of the um, Dartmouth High School students to just um, kind of help people into their seats, that kind of thing. Um, this is a free concert. Uh, the music that they're going to be playing is actually uh, from 1664. And the conductor is someone who's actually been working with uh, the Boston Pops. So it should be an incredible concert. Um, all the, many, many of the events that we have planned are all free to the public. So um, we want to make sure that you, you attend, that you bring your children, you bring your grandchildren, and it's going to be a great time. So that's one of the options. Um, one of the things that we're going to do later on is there'll be a series of um, clipboards in the back, and people can sign up for events that they are most interested in. And then when it gets closer to the event, then the, the person in charge, let's say, um, Paul Lavasser, he's in charge of Russell's Mills, okay, he will call you and make arrangements to see what your schedule is and kind of tighten up the arrangements on that weekend, okay. So one of the first things that we do have um, is the, uh, the dinner dance, and I don't think there are any tickets left, but I do want to have Lynn just kind of talk to you for a moment about um, what's going on with that and how excited we are, what's, we're, we're going to have that at Hawthorne Country Club. So I'll have Lynn Medeiros come up, our town clerk, and explain. <laughs> Cindy's taller than I am. Um, it's going to be a great night. Everybody's excited. Um, we're going to have DJ Jason Mello as our DJ. Uh, desserts by Dee Dee's Delights. The meal is um, hors d'oeuvres at 6 p.m., a family-style dinner, which is chicken piccata, New England scrod, and vegetable stir-fry. Um, the Chinese auction, we have some really nice gifts. Um, our businesses have been really generous, and they have um, donated a lot of really nice items, certificates, so, you know, everybody, you know, plan on having you know a good time with the Chinese auction. Mrs. Marlin and Cynthia Rose um, have been doing a great job doing all of this for us. So I think it'll be a great night. It's kind of we've geared it up to be kind of that night that we've not we don't all get to do anymore and it's gonna be that sit down family style dinner, um, good conversation, dancing and a night where everybody gets to spend quality time with each other and having a really good time. Okay? Thank you, Lynn. So one of the other things that's happening is many of the villages that we still consider villages, such as Peyton Arum and Smith Mills, um, Hicksville, okay, they're having their own village celebrations. And um, what we are doing with that is we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to have Paul Lavasser come up and talk about his particular Hicksville, Smith Mills project. Um, but it's, it's, really, it's going to be really cool um, that weekend. The fire department's not here, but they're going to do a fire muster. And I have never been to a fire muster. I've been here for a little while, and I have never been to. Has anyone else been to a fire muster? Yes, Ms. Silva? Yes, you've been? OK. Oh, Mr. Lavasser, could you please come up? Another one of our volunteers, and he's going to speak quickly about the Hicksville Smith Mills Village celebration. Three minutes, Mr. Lavasser. Three minutes? No. In three minutes, I can get started. Well, anyway, um, 
This, this first one is um, really a combination of uh, areas in the town that, you know, in the north end of the town for the most part. And um, it's over two days, as you see up here, uh, May 24 and 25. Uh, in addition to the uh, fire muster, uh, which is going to be down in the back of uh, the uh, town hall area, um, that's on Saturday. Now, Sunday is everything else takes place. And hold on your hats, here we go. <laughs> um, we, we're going to have ne near the statue of David Gifford, our Medal of Honor recipient from the Civil War, we're going to have a Civil War living history encampment. Now, that's going to be real good for kids. Uh, and then they'll be able to ask an awful lot of questions of the guys. They'll be doing different things. Uh, which would be common in a Civil War camp. Uh, now, on, on Sunday, Sunday is kind of special, and it just fell in this way. Um, as you know, this is the 150th anniversary of the Civil War that's been going on for the last uh, few years. And uh, on May 24th, 1864, uh, David Gifford, whose statue was out there, uh, and uh, other Civil War soldiers uh, saved a whole lot of uh, folks that were on a stranded steamer with the Confederates using it for uh, gun practice. And um, that's how he wound up getting the Medal of Honor. It was under heavy fire, actually, from big cannons. Well, at any rate, the real anniversary of 150 years ago when he did it uh, winds up being on the Saturday, the day before. And it all comes in really nice because Memorial Day is then. So the VFW is going to help us out also. And uh, uh, of course, um, we also have a uh, Medal of Honor recipient with a small monument near that one. So both of ours in town. And we're lucky we have two in this town. But I won't dwell on that because I'll run out of time. Okay. Um, at that same time, the uh, elementary system in town here is going to give us a concert of Civil War music. So the, the children are going to be taking part, and uh, the music teacher always does a nice job. In fact, uh, she's the one that uh, helped us raise money way back when we first started this whole project, which is kind of neat. Uh, so that will be at 1.30 on the Sunday. All right. Um, now, there's going to be an antique car show there, and also there's going to be uh, various community uh, organizations that are going to be having displays there. That's at the middle school, yes. inside the middle school. And, and, and town hall. And the town hall. Yeah, yeah well, I, I didn't get to that part. That's the last part. So. Um, and uh, the DCTV is going to be running historic uh, documentaries that we produced over the last many years actually uh, at the town hall here and uh, that's going to be good because uh, we do have a lot of good things that have been produced by various people dealing with the history of this town and the history of this town is something that I think we all should be very much proud of and that is it. Um, then we come to the uh, incorporation day which is going to be on June 8th with a rain date of the following day the, the reasoning for um, the next day and not the next weekend is we're, we're having fireworks and um, little did we know how complicated bringing these fireworks across state lines would be. But once they're here, they're ours. So we're going to have the fireworks the next day if we get rained out. Um, but stay tuned to DCTV. We'll tell you everything that's going on. So we're going to have the, the fireworks. There'll be live entertainment. There's the two, three bands, uh, the Dartmouth Community Band, King's Row, and Wild Nights. Wild Nights will actually play after the fireworks. Um, the Dartmouth Public Schools will do, be doing a play. The uh, middle school students will be doing a play, which will be a reenactment of the land sale of Dartmouth. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, there will be a birthday cake um, that we will be cutting at the ceremony. And then um, last but not least is uh, Brothers of the Brush. Um, Mr. Brooks, can you quickly come up here and speak? 
He always take. He always like. Uh, you know, I give it my all. He comes up here and he just takes the show away from me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, the Brothers of the Brush. We have been organized, and as you can see, there are some people in the audience here who already have some Brothers of the Brush uh, competition, and I think that they all look like they're going to shoot for the ugliest beards. I don't know. But anyway, at this point, we have 95 people who have now uh, joined our Brothers of the Brush, and uh, that's quite a quite a feat as it is, and they're still coming in. Uh, our, to try to get in contact with these 95 to 100 people is difficult. So if, with Derek's help, or his leadership, he set up some kind of a thing on the yes, 350.com. But it's on, on the computers, and in order for us to get a hold of those 100, already they have, we have a, about 70% of them all have uh, email addresses. So now we're sending out at least 70 or 75 of them right at this point that hit the button and it goes out to them. So it makes it a lot easier for us. So I've got about 20 different people that I've got to call by the old fashioned way and get on the phone and say, hey, you know, we're going to have a meeting here or there. Talking about having a meeting, the Brothers of the Brush are going to hold a meeting at the VFW up on Cross Road on a Saturday afternoon, which is March 29th, on a Saturday afternoon, and we're going to try to get as many of the brothers of the brush to show up, show up to kind of find out their destiny as to what they want to do. There are so many things that have been brought up that say they can do it. Just today, we had an offer from somebody that wants to play ball with us. And someone mentioned, and I don't know if it was Cindy, said something about the paw socks or something. <laughs> we're not professionals, and I don't know who they are, but we'd love to play ball, and we're going to try to organize a baseball or softball team. We're talking about getting stock aged and arrest some of you people that don't want to join the Brothers of the Brush and go around clean shaven. And even when you don't have hair on the top of your head, it's even worse. We're going to really get you in the stock aids. The brothers at the Saponagansett uh, uh, program, and they're going to award trophies for the various different types of beards. The beards uh, consist of the longest beard, and the neatest, and the ugliest, and the Abe Lincoln, a goatee, beach, peach fuzz, grizzly bear, Fu Manchu, Santa Claus, and unique facial hair. And so those are some of the classes. We can have anything. But this is a fun thing. We don't want to do anything that's going to embarrass people. We don't want to do anything to put a bad name on our team. We're, we're not the bad guys, but the, we're the fun-loving guys. So that's why we're going to do that. Uh, have I used, used it up yet? Certificates for these events, along with the trophies, we're going to give every participant who has joined with us a citation of some sort that's going to be able to be put in a frame. We're working on now getting frames for these things. And we've got a calligrapher who is going to do the final printing of the name on these particular things. So at least get something to remember it by in the future years to come. But the meeting that I said we're going to have on the 29th at the VFW is to try to find out whether they want to play ball or organize for it. And secondly, uh, we would like to know whether they want to to attend some of the functions that are going to go on and make their presence known in there, maybe with their stock aid or something like that is going to be put. She's pushing me, she's pushing me. <laughs> that's all I think I got to say right this moment, if that's enough for you, Cindy. It is. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you see what I mean now. Um, so, Mr. Brooks actually, and there are some of the other gentlemen here who, are, who participated 50 years ago. This photograph is from 50 years ago, and on our website we have many of the photographs from the celebration, the 300th celebration, so it's really, it's really kind of fun. Um, so, um, that, was what, that was the incorporation. Uh, Mr. Cressman was just here checking up on me, and um, he wanted to make sure that everyone was well and that, that
that we were all here and he's very satisfied. So thank you so much for showing up and making me look good. Um, so Pagnerum is our next village. Um, and Diane Gilbert, who is on the committee for um, Pagnerum, is going to speak. She's working actually with um, a few other folks who she will certainly mention, and she'll talk about the Pagnerum Day. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, for the purposes of this evening's meeting, I am Ron Souza. He is the chair of the Pagnerum Committee and he could not be with us this evening so i was um agreeable i guess enough to fill in for him but i am on the committee as is mary jane gold golden who sits who's sitting back there and several others and uh, i want to point you to this weekend which will be july 26th and 27th uh, you will notice that uh, on Saturday, uh, although we haven't identified which uh, events will take place which day, because our committee is still sort of trying to flesh all of this stuff out. So, but these are the, uh, a high level view of what the events will be. Uh, we're, we're going to have, you know, tie in with the uh, Paid Nairn Village uh, retailers and, uh, you know, there will be a sidewalk sale as they usually have that time of year. And so we'll tie in with them. So we're trying to leverage other events to tie into the 350th. But on top of that, we're also uh, working with DNRT and uh, they are going to make their facility open for a history display of photographs. And again, you'll be hearing more about that because the idea is that we'd like to have people to come and share their historic photographs with the town. And during this weekend, their facility will be open for those two days for people to drop in. Uh, sticking with DNRT, they're also going to have a story walk at the Frank Knowles Reserve, which is on the corner of Shore Road and Gulf Road. Uh, speaking of baseball, uh, there will be a vintage baseball game that's going to be at Concordia y uh, Yard. That will be on a Sunday. Uh, the Aiken House will be open for both of those days. We are going to have uh, the, uh, the King Philip's War reenactors uh, during those two days. They'll be camping out at the Aiken House. And we'll also have a presentation of Russell's Garrison uh, during that time. And again, you'll hear more details as, as we get further along. Um, what I want to emphasize is that volunteers are going to be very important. We already have an interest uh, from volunteers, and what we hope to do after you all have signed up is we will, as Cindy has indicated, we'll get you all together and we'll try to organize a meeting uh, when we have specific information. We want to know your availability, your interest, uh, so we'll try to match you to all of the events that, you know, that we have uh, going on that weekend. Uh, we'll have activities at Aponagansett Park uh, that uh, is still being worked out. And also we're collaborating with the Dartmouth Y. So during the Sunday only, uh, we will have activities uh, there. So because we're going to be spread out, particularly on Sunday, uh, we'll be, um, we're, we're going to have a trolley uh, to also help people get around uh, if a car is not practical. A trolley which would um, take people from Pagnerum Village up to St. Mary's Hall, uh, to the Aiken House, uh, all the way to the Concordia uh, yard. So, uh, you know, we're trying to make things as accessible and obviously uh, make it as interesting and, and exciting for folks during that weekend. 
but volunteers are absolutely critical. Uh, we have a lot going on. There have been many people involved in this, you know, during the course of the year. And uh, now it's time for other folks in the town to join the fun along with us and participate either as attendees or alongside us as volunteers. Thank you. Okay, so that was uh, Diane Gilbert with the um, paid and Aram rundown. Um, I'm going to have Paul Lavasser come up again in a moment to, to talk about Russell's Mills. But before I do, I just wanted to make note that um, a few times during the celebration, there will be antique cars on display. That's going to be at um, Smith Mills, Hicksville, and also at Russell's Mills, OK? And also at Russell's Mills, they're going to have some antique um, farm equipment. So all of that's being organized and kind of put together by Russ Olson, who's been very generous with his time trying to put together some very quality cars for us to all check out as we're at some of these events. So that's going to be fun. And I do appreciate Russ and what he's been doing for us. So I'm going to have Paul Lavasser come up again, because you're so popular, and give us a quick rundown on Russell's Mills Village, as, as most of you know, uh, Russell's Mills uh, Village itself is uh, kind of an interesting country village and uh, has a lot of personal charm to it, like, like some of the other parts of Dartmouth do too. And um, the one thing to remember about uh, this, uh, which is kind of interesting and a little different than the other activities we have going on, is that um, it's going to be kind of split in, in this way. Um, the Grange, who has their uh, open house, uh, starts on Friday. Now, Friday for us there is going to be set up, but uh, the Grange part will be going on, and um, that, uh, that's, of course, on Fisher Road, as I guess most of you know. Saturday is going to be the big day uh, with uh, just about everything going on, like a three-ring circus almost, because um, at Alderbrook Farm, uh, we're going to be set up. Uh, Cindy started talking about the fact that uh, there would be antique cars there, It'd be antique uh, vehicles of different types, right? Uh, and also antique machinery. Those of you that know what one lungers are, there's going to be that too, and um, anything else. Did you want? Did you want to talk about that? No. I no, you, should, you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's all right. I will tell. I'll just tell you. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a whole lot of fun. And again, good for the kids. They're gonna. They'll learn a whole lot. The main part in the Alderbrook Farm, be behind the buildings. If you're familiar with the farm at all. Uh, there's a whole big area there, and there's the fields and back. You're going to be up in the fields, right? Uh, and um, we're going to be running a timeline from Native American section uh, into Revolutionary War, uh, War of 1812, uh, up through the Civil War. Uh, and there'll be different things going on with all of that. And I think you'll find that... Uh, itself very interesting. We're also um, working with the district, um, historic district people, uh, in fact we have a meeting coming up shortly, uh, to uh, also have tours uh, so that you can go on a tour to the houses and they'll give you the history of the houses and all that and uh, we'll see how far we can get with that. that that's a walking tour. Uh, there's also going to be a vehicle that will be able to get you out to the um, Allen's Mill so that you can see the uh, restored mill that uh, we have there in Russell's Mills. So, okay, the uh, Lloyd Center is also coming in to help us out, and they're going to be doing water activities uh, down at the landing, Russell's Mills Landing. And uh, then there's a few other things in the works that I, I really uh, don't have enough information yet to um, for, uh, talk further about it. But... Uh, uh, it, it should all be very good. It's all going to tie in very nicely in historical things. And that, that's a good educational thing, which is my big thing anyway. And that's about it. For now.
Okay. So that was Paul Levasseur. And um, the next thing we're going to speak about is the parade. Little did we know when we started getting involved in the 350, all the new things that we'd be learning about, like the parade, how to design a parade route, how intense this whole thing is. And um, Ellie White um, is heading up this committee, and she's very, very fortunate to have um, some, some real expertise on her committee, who is, who is Bob Cork, who's also going to speak with her for a moment. Thank you. So we are so lucky to get the Shriners. The Shriners is going to be the whole thing. Um, they're coming with everything. Uh, Bob is the organizer of the Madeira Club, and um, we got pipes and drums and police, and um, as you can see, we have all that. Um, we, uh, we have more than 20 floats. We have several bands, um, scouts. Russ is bringing his uh, antique cars to the, uh, and some, uh, we have an old milk wagon that Mr. Rodericks uh, owns. He's putting that in. Oh, yeah, putting in. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, we have the Bay Sox. Now, Bob's going to tell you a little bit about the Bay Sox because he has something going on in New Bedford with them. Um, we are going to need a lot of volunteers. Uh, Bob uh, told me that we're going to have units. And depending on how long the parade is, we may need several units, and the parade is going to be long. Um, each unit is going to need a couple of people. One or two will march with the parade to keep each group moving so there won't be anybody stopping and having a long space in between. Uh, um, then we're going to need people to sign these people in when they get here, at least three people in front of the town hall here. Uh, and then we need a bunch of people that Bob is going to organize and Ed Pimentel and his emergency management group are also going to be organizers. Bob, you want to say something about the Bay Sox? Sure. Do uh, you guys want to talk about the parade group, too? Oh, oh I'm yeah. sorry. The parade's, yeah. Going to yeah. <laughs> the parade's going to start at the middle school. It's going to go down Slocum Road. It's going to turn right on Russell's Mills by DCTV and the police department, then turn left on Elm Street. It's going to go to Bush Street, where the superintendent's office is. Uh, on to Middle Street, and it will end at the St. Mary's uh, Church parking lot. We thought that would be a safe place for the kids and everybody to uh, get off. Um, we're going to ask all the vehicles that don't have anybody to unload to continue down Elm Street and go to whatever destination they choose. Okay, Bob? <laughs> all, right. <laughs> just got all this work to do, believe me, I haven't been doing this all. Oh, but when uh, he's done, I just want to tell you something about Blisconna. <laughs> and uh, as you can see just from that alone, it's, it's a large route, uh, one that I would not be walking. Uh, <laughs> I'd be riding, you know, because that's three miles. I don't do three miles unless I'm in a car. Um, but it is long, and we do need the help from volunteers in order to maintain divisions. Once we know totally how many participants are in the parade, it'll be all broken down by division. And then by division, you need a division leader and a runner in each division so that someone is that we can talk to on a walkie-talkie and say, this is what we're doing, where we're going, how we're heading, is there a stumble, you know, up front, and then keeping every division in line so that you, you just don't all mass together and it looks like one big glob, you know, and it just goes by and everybody goes, was that the parade, you know? It's a huge parade and it's a long distance to go. So th all of those volunteers are very important to a parade and keeping it going. And uh, as Ellie said, starting with the registration piece and ending with, at the end, making sure that the, it keeps on moving. It does, you know, they tend to want to get to the end and then everybody wants to just stop. And no, you got to go. <laughs> go to the church. Get up to the church. You know, get over here because there's still parade coming. And you want everybody to really enjoy it. You want the people, participants to enjoy it. You want the people watching to enjoy it. And it's a big deal for Dartmouth in the 350 parade. So that's what our goal is, and we need volunteers to help us with that. And as she talked about the Bay Sox, I'm going to help Tom because he said Paw Sox, and I wasn't going to say anything about it. Uh, <laughs> it's not the Paw Sox. It's the New Bedford Bay Sox, and I don't know if anybody has heard of the New Bedford Bay Sox. They have been around, and since 2009 they came here. I'm the housing director for the Bay Sox. It's one of my community jobs I also do, which means that I help put up 30 baseball players at home. So if anybody wants a player, let me know. I have about 14 booked, and I need 14 more homes. 
uh, around. We have a few in Dartmouth already that, that live in Dartmouth for June and July. Uh, the base locks, what, we, what we're looking to do is we always want to be community involved with every community around and knowing it was Dartmouth 350. It's one that we've talked about on July 12th. They're doing, uh, we're doing an old timers game. We're actually having a game with the Providence uh, Grays and another team from New York's coming up all in the old time uniforms. Having that game in the afternoon and we have a double header that night, but um, with our regular players. And so we're looking to incorporate Dartmouth into that. There's a lot of planning that needs to go on and I'm not gonna mention a lot of the things, but you can imagine from an old time uh, baseball game and pie eating contest and you name it, you know, must that you know contact the works it, it is a lot and that's where they want the brothers of the br the brush I almost said bush one time I was like that's wrong <laughs> can I join Tom I might not grow more than this but you know but it's not the Paw Sox it's in the Bedford Bay Sox and it's a local team of college students from all around the United States and Puerto Rico that are coming to this area this year this summer we have them every year um, and it's one of the few four in the country that are sponsored by Major League Baseball so it is a big deal. They do very well. Our coach is uh, Rick Miller from the, from the Red Sox. Uh, Brian Rose from Dartmouth. He's our pitching coach also. And we have another Red, former Red Sox player from Westport who played in the Red Sox uh, league for a long time who's going to be also helping us. So it's kind of like all Red Sox helping the Bay Sox. So it's kind of cool that we're doing that. But it'll be a, it'll be a great day, that. And also the parade is going to be even more wonderful. So Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, Nate mentioned I did try to get the uh, trophy from the Red Sox, but I haven't heard yet. <laughs> um, Maria Connor is the chairperson for Bliss Connor, and she couldn't be here tonight. Debbie Raymond, the director that counts on age, and Nancy Miller, the activities director there, and myself were on the committee. Um, we are going to have uh, quite a few things at the Council on Aging. Uh, we are going to have, uh, the veterans are going to have an antique um, auto show. Um, does that have anything to do with you, Russ? Um, anyway, that's going to be um, on May 3rd. Um, they're going to have that from 1 to 4. And then they're going to have a dance that evening with old time music. We're going to be, have honoring Mother Day. We're going to have a honoring Father's Day. We are going to have a high tea on May 23rd. And anybody that comes to that, we're asking that they wear bonnets and gloves. <laughs> so, so Maria wants to make it nice. Um, we're going to have a health fair, and at that health fair, we're also going to have a children's fair. We're going to have alpacas, uh, uh, clowns, and other things for the children. And the wellness center is going to have open house, and that's all on the same day on June 21st from 10 to 2. Uh, the alumni dinner is going to be on the 28th, and we're going to have a, a movie uh, that Derek uh, DCT made, uh, DCTV made on um, the shoreline of Dartmouth. It really is pretty if you haven't seen it. And then we're going to uh, have a fashion show on September 19th, and that is going to we have people at the council sewing um, clothing from the 1700s and the 1800s, and the models are going to be wearing those for the fashion show. It's going to be dinner and fashion show. And uh, that's about it that's, uh, that we're going to have at the uh, Council on Aging. Thank you. So we're almost done here, folks, and then we're going to have people go to the back and sign up. Um, but we've saved the, the bold and the beautiful for the last. Um, Jen Freights, who just happens to be married to one of, my, one of my associates. Jen, would you come up and talk about Green Up Day? Thanks, Cindy. That was very kind of you. Um, so as Cindy said, my name is Jennifer Freights and I work for the Department of Public Works. Every year our department participates and coordinates a townwide cleanup. And this year what we wanted to do is we were going to do our same Earth Day April cleanup where someone um, volunteers, get your family friends and um, put together a team. Um, come pick up supplies at our office located on Russell's Mills. Um, and what we wanted to do this year because of the Dharma 350th is we wanted to extend our um, cleanup efforts. And as previously mentioned, all the different events, um, we wanted to have people come out to those places the weekend before and do just kind of like a general cleanup, tidy up, spot check, so that, that way when these events occur, everything looks nice and presentable and, um, and we can take some pride in 
what we'll, and you know. So if you would like to volunteer, um, I have a list of locations on the uh, back table there, but we'll have a list of locations at our office and online. Um, and I think that's it. All right. Thank you. So I'd like to mention again, please, um, that all these activities are free and we're really, we wanted to keep them free. Mr. Mr. Brooks wanted to charge for all of his things, but we said no, you know, but I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, you know, this is just a, a great thing for us and we're so glad that we have so many people that came out to, to help out and it's really, really important that you get your children and your grandchildren involved because um, I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to be around for the next one. So we kind of need to plant the seed and make people enthusiastic and have that kind of Dartmouth pride that we all feel. And the only way to do that is for them to actually experience um, some of these events. In fact, again, Brothers of the Brush, I go to that meeting and it's like usually a couple hours long, an hour and a half of it, all I do is talk about the last Brothers of the Brush, okay, and then, then there's only 20 minutes left to talk about the business. So, you know, obviously it's made an impression on them. And what we want to, we really want to extend that to all these activities. So please, please, you know, bring people, bring your families. The parade's going to be awesome. All these people have worked so, so hard to, to make this a very, very special event. And it will be the best celebration on the South Coast. There's no question. So um, if you would please, in the back there, sign up sheets. We'd love to just think about what you'd like to sign up for, put your name down because something kind of caught your eye, okay? And we will contact you when it all gets a little bit closer to the date. But thank you so much, folks. Appreciate your help.